Okay. So today I have something interesting. Come on. Don't trust people on the internet. They lie. Okay, so today I have something interesting. This is going to be the new build for the channel. This is a 1929 Ford Model A chassis, and it was originally a truck chassis, so it has a wider front axle, and what we're going to do with it is we are going to build a vintage race car out of it, because I don't feel like we're actually restoring a car, and that'd be too much work, and I feel like it would be easier to build a whole new body for this even though now they say that it sounds kind of ridiculous and like it won't be easy but we're gonna try to do it anyways so this is 1929 model a and we're gonna design it so it's kind of like a vintage Bugatti or Amal car or something like that some sort of vintage race car from Europe but we're going to use all American components and make it as American as we can while also being very European because that definitely makes sense. Um, and so basically, the reason why I chose the Model A to start with is because most of the cars back then were all standard frames like this, and you just bolted on a solid rear axle and then some sort of front axle and had fun. And that's about all it was. And the Model A has a 105 inch wheelbase, which will be good for handling. and. I was thinking about, originally I was thinking about just rebuilding the four cylinder, which the plan will be, we'll shove a different engine in at first, and then we'll rebuild the four cylinder, that way we can race it, hopefully. Most tracks on the east coast don't allow us to actually race a car without a roll bar, but we'll figure that out as we get to it. But to get it running, we're going to use this Chevy inline six 4.1 liter engine which makes a whole 150 horsepower which is absolutely nothing for 4.1 liter but it fits the theme because even though that engine was designed in 19 well that engine was designed in 1965 but it was built in 1979 it's, it has emissions crap on it that we're gonna have to rip off it's mainly through the carburetor it was out of a K is out of, of a K30 truck with a three-speed manual on it, and I'm still debating whether we're going to go to a four-speed manual or if we're just going to stick an overdrive unit on the tail shaft housing of that. But that's up for debate, and I'm still figuring that out. I want to hit at least 85 miles per hour that way we can actually drive it on the highway. Whether it'll be able to stop from 85 miles per hour is another thing that we'll have to figure out as we get there. But that is the idea, and the body. This is where it's going to get very interesting. It's, anybody can build a body out of aluminum, but we're going to build it like a World War I airplane, and we're going to do it out of fabric. And I still have to do more research on that. But I know that Bentley did it with their Lamar cars, and there was a company that did coach work in fabric. So I know it's possible, and I know there are many people who have done it. And we're going to do the front half of the body in aluminum and the back half in fabric. And we'll use wood ribs to actually form the shape and then we'll stretch canvas or something like that over it and paint over it. But that's ge the general idea of this build. And of course the Model A chassis is going to have to be lowered and we have to throw a different spring on the front and the whole rear suspension is going to be different. I'm trying, I'm trying to build this and have it road legal and ready to go before before July which seems ambitious but I think we can pull it off and this week I'm gonna try to get the suspension done at the front and the rear and we're gonna try to pull the engine and get this six-cylinder fitted in here Lauren bring the camera over here okay. 
I'm gonna keep it recording. Yeah, yeah, keep recording. Do, do, do. So one of the things that I figured out, and I took a lot of measurements on this, is that this engine and transmission is insanely long for this chassis, which now they say it sounds stupid, they think otherwise. But the end, the tail shaft of the transmission lands about right here. Kind of zoom in on this. <laughs> it lands about right here, which means this torque tube, because Ford decided to be a brave idea to use a torque tube instead of a drive shaft. This torque tube, we're gonna have to chop out a good 16 inches of it, which is a lot, but we're gonna make it work. And then this rear suspension, we're gonna ditch this mono spring because mono spring rear suspension is pretty stupid and it just does not work well for handling. And we kind of want this to go around corners because that's my thing. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to a quarter elliptical setup using a half elliptical spring on each side and the spring is going to be mounted inside of the frame or below it right here and it's going to be bolted up here and this whole rear axle is going to sit closer to around here up there and i'm still debating whether we want to extend the wheelbase by five inches and push it back and then we won't have to chop the torque tube as much or if I want to cut this off here, and I want to move this whole rear cross member backwards, forwards, not backwards, forwards. Because if I do that, then we have to chop this up, which I don't really want to do. But if I just move the wheelbase further, move the wheels further apart, then I can avoid that. But we'll have a longer wheelbase at 110 inches, and I don't really want to have a longer wheelbase but we might end up just doing that. And now that I think about it, it might not be the end of the world to have a longer wheelbase because it will make it more stable at high speeds, but I still want this thing to rotate pretty easily. We'll figure it out as we come to it. I mean, it's gonna have pretty skinny tires, so it should be able to rotate pretty well, no matter what. <clears throat> and with 150 horsepower, it would be pretty easy to just give it a little bit of gas to rotate it. But we'll get to that as we get to it, which will probably be within the week because I have springs coming in for the rear suspension and I would like to get that done before putting in the engine and transmission. That way we have everything set up nicely. And once the engine and transmission goes in, then I'll be able to pull it apart and we'll be able to respray everything and make it look really nice and then we'll drop it back in and then we'll build the body around it. But today, what I'd like to do is I would like to get the front suspension together because I bought this new spring from Speedway, from Speedway online and it is a mono spring so you only have one leaf and as you can see it gets thinner towards the outside so it's kind of like a variable rate spring which should give us some nice handling characteristics on the road for this car and we'll have to figure out a race suspension setup as we get to that which probably won't be for a year or two so one of the things with these old cars this be like a model a yep. go on I always have these terrible split pins. And one of the ways to get around them, because they rust out and they're garbage, is to just hammer a socket on it and turn. Which is exactly what we're gonna do for all these. So, let's get to it. Or it'll be a pain in the ass and we'll, we're about to find out exactly what it's gonna be. Because these split pins are always terrible. And I hate them with passion. Stick your ratchet on and get a pipe, big ass pipe. 
Come on. Oh. What? Okay, now that all these nuts are off, now we can take off the bottom of the shackle, and then we can lift up the frame and change out the outer shackles in the spring. And this is how we're going to do it. Come on. Okay, so I got this mount off, all the U-bolts are off. Now I'm going to take off the shackles, and they're being a bit of a pain, but we're getting there. I need a different tool for this. <laughs> Big hammer. Best tool you can have. These bushings seem to be actually too small. Great. Perfect. On that note, I don't think we're going to be able to finish the front suspension today. But, well, I also need a block to go below this. That way we can shackle it in properly. So that might be just where we end here for today. What I'll probably end up doing these are definitely the correct eh, they might be the correct bushing for those stock shackles hang on a second no no so whoever I bought these bushings from labeled them wrong because they are not for a Model A they might be for a later Ford or they might be from a T. No, they'd have to be from a later Ford. Because a T would probably have split pins for these nuts. Alright, so new plan. New plan. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure everything. And then I'm going to print out new bushings with my 3D printer. And then we'll go from there. In fact, this got this nut is jammed on here, which makes me think that's not even the right nut. Don't trust people on the internet. They lie. Alright. And on that note, I guess it's time to end. With the car up in the air. Bushings that don't fit. And a leaf spring that needs a block below. I really should have ordered more parts, but... Right. But now you've seen the project, and hopefully we'll have the suspension done by next week. And we'll have that engine where that engine is right now. And it'll be all ready to... It'll be all ready for us to rip apart the six cylinder, make sure the head isn't cracked, nothing's bad, re-gasket it, repaint it, make it look pretty, and hopefully that could, and hopefully I'll have that part done by middle of next month, end of next month, we'll see how it goes, but yeah. So, shackles need new bushings, I'm going to 3D print those tonight. So I should be able to get this all together tomorrow, and assuming the rear springs come in, we'll be able to do that tomorrow too, or Thursday or Friday, something like that. But we should have the suspension done by the end of the week, which will allow me to actually pull the engine this weekend and throw that engine in. Hopefully have that done by next Monday. So... I will have more for you guys later.